Canon's going to release several SIN lenses this year, including the first ever RF mount units. Atomos supports Apple ProRes RAW for the Lumix BGH1 box camera and the Lumix S1. And Sony customers are about to get three new lenses. This and more after the intro. Hi, I'm Simon. Thanks for tuning in to The Ordinary Filmmaker. Subscribe to get notification of new videos like this one so you don't miss any news, rumors, gear reviews, or tutorials. And a big thanks goes out to Atomos for sponsoring The Ordinary Filmmaker. I'm using the Ninja 5 external recorder for all my studio work as it saves me a ton of time in post. Want to speed up your editing? Use my links below and purchase your own Ninja. And now for the news. Canon Rumors reports that we'll be getting more Canon cinema lenses in 2021, including the first ever RF mount CIN lens. Canon will be replacing the current compact CIN zoom with a new set that covers both S35 or Super 35 and full frame image sensors. These lenses will support both PL and EF mounts. Atomos announced that Apple ProRes RAW support for the Lumix BGH1 box camera and the Lumix S1. Now when combined with the Ninja, it will record up to 4K DCI ProRes RAW and up to 3.7K anamorphic RAW. ProRes RAW gives us the latitude when adjusting the look and extending the brightness and shadow detail. And both ProRes RAW and the higher bandwidth, less compressed ProRes RAW HQ are supported. According to Nakashita, Sony customers are about to get several new lenses. The FE 24mm, the FE 40mm, and the FE 50mm. These are all E-mount lenses of the G-Series. The announcement? Well, it's expected in the next few weeks, so hang on tight and I'll bring you the news as soon as it happens. And now, let's go behind the scenes. Last year, Nightcore asked if I want to review their battery chargers, but I said no. I really didn't see the point of doing a review of, well, battery chargers. I didn't see the benefit to you and I thought that, well, it might be a bit of a sleep fest. I mean, they're battery chargers after all. Now, my Canon chargers worked well and I didn't really, well, use enough of them to even want to purchase a dual bay charger. And because I have enough of these Canon chargers and plenty of wall mounts, it was never really an issue for me. I didn't see the benefit. But then I got a bunch of Sony batteries. And these are the big bricks here. These things are huge and they take forever to charge. Um, the chargers that came with them weren't very good. I picked up a few from Amazon and here's one here. Where is it? Right here. This one here. And it looked pretty good. The reviews were pretty good. And you know what? All it came with was USB. There was no wall plug. So anyhow, I plugged it in, put in two batteries and wouldn't you know, the screen started flickering and I just thought, well, what's the point of this? I don't, I don't know if there's a problem with the unit. I don't know if it's a fire hazard. I don't know if it's just poor quality. I'm going to go with the poor quality, which is why I'm not even going to mention the name. So I'm going to put that one right there. And these are, of course, the Canon chargers that I have. You can see right on the back, there's the wall plug. I mean, how hard is that to do? It probably costs less than a dollar on the assembly line to design that in. I think that would be a great thing. Now, I did follow up with Netcore and I said, look, or sorry, Nightcore. And I said, look, I'm ready to review your chargers. And the first day it arrived, I plugged in these big Sony NP570 batteries, the pair of them. Now the screen was crisp and it was clear and it didn't have any flickering. And the information clearly showed that the battery health or clearly showed the battery health as well as the charge status. And this is what I like about these ones here. Um, it more or less says good. And if it's good, well then, you know, life is pretty good. And it has two other settings that lets you know that it's okay or yeah, you pretty well need to replace these. And you can get to see its progress in charging. Now, a lot of these things like this cheaper one here, or even the Canon one, you basically get four bars and that's it. Well, this thing here, well, it's plugged over there. It's actually charging the other one of these right now. And what it has is it has the four bars, but it also shows the volts. And I know that these, when they get up to, I think 8.3 volts, I know they're fully charged. So I can see how long it's gonna take. There's a lot better information and I think they work really well, but and here's the big butt here. And this is my only recommendation to Nightcore. Uh, this is the one thing I'd like to see Nightcore do is integrate a wall charger into the back like Canon does right here. I mean, how hard is this to do? And, and look, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with USB charging. It, it's fine, but 
Do you know how many surge suppressor or power bars I have that actually have USB cap capability of charging? I'm not going to go out and replace all my power strips or any of my power supply bars or anything like that. And, you know, I'm not going to hook it into my computer and leave my computer on for hours just so I can charge. I have very few devices that actually give me a USB charging port. But in my house, I literally have dozens upon dozens of these standard outlets that are available for charging. So Nightcore, the, like, you make great units. I'm really happy with them. And for $30 US for a dual charger for the Sony LP batteries or NP batteries, I, I think they're really good. But the only thing I would knock you on is just put one of these on the back. And, and I know, I get it. This works for North America. For Europe, you'd need a different one. For Asia, you'd need a different one. And, and I get that. But the customer experience is greatly improved with this. And you know what? There's no losing this. It doesn't come off. Um, these things here, while yes, you've engineered it in the back. This is not your night course, by the way, but they've engineered it in the back. So it, you, you, you basically snake it all the way through and it locks into place. But, you know, I'm, I'm happy to pay an extra few dollars to have something like this. I think this does a much better job. But that's it to know. I felt like I'm doing an Andy Rooney uh, as, um, uh, segment here. If, for those of you old enough to remember Andy Rooney, you're probably at least as old as me. But um, no, it, it's kind of funny because like I said, for the, the LP6 batteries, I've got a bunch of these and I usually keep two of them on the wall. And if I need to charge two of them at the same time, I just put one in each one and it's not a big deal. But for these guys here and these larger batteries, these do take some time. And usually I've got one of these on my light back there and the other one I'll put it in the charger and I don't really care how long it takes, but um, I do re really like the Nightcore and how well they work. Um, I like these batteries. Um, and you know what? The, the Ninja 5 that I have here, it also has a spot for these Sony batteries too, but no matter how big these are, I, I just, I'd rather use AC power, uh, plug it directly in, and then I don't have to worry about where the battery is. And right now, I love the way I'm recording. Like I can look up here and I can see in the screen that everything's going well. I can see the information and it's high enough up that I'm not focused on it most of the time. I can look directly at you. And so that's a pretty good deal. I do like the Ninja 5. I, I'm actually pretty happy with my setup here. I've got the Glide Gear TMP100, which is the teleprompter. And I look directly through that and I've got the Ninja on top. So when I do want to look up, I want to see my recording time. I can see it there. I can see if I'm framed properly. Although right now I've got the screen overlay information, so I can't really tell if where my head is. I think it's the top is right about here and where my fingers cut off. Um, so what I like to do is I like to frame it up, see what, how well I sit, and then tap the center of the display so that way the screen overlays go and I can see exactly you know, my, my barriers of my frame here. And I really love that with a Ninja 5. It gives me that extra freedom. But yeah, um, you know, I haven't been sent a lot of product to review lately. I've got the Nightcore, and of course I got the Atomos Ninja 5. And I already did a review of the Atomos Ninja 5. It's a great camera. But you know what's been really giving me a lot of troubles lately? Excuse me. Is the teleprompter app. Um, I forgot what it's called. Prompt Smart uh, Pro. I, I, I really love the way it listens to your voice, and it will scroll and scroll based on what you're saying. And it works really well in that regard. And, you know, the app was pretty well flawless up until, I guess, a couple of weeks ago. And there was an update, and I, I got to tell you now, the, the remote control is terrible. It's almost like troubleshooting one of those early Windows computers. Uh, just nothing seemed to work. You have to blow away the registry or something. And what I'm noticing now that's happening is... Um, I'll set it to remote control and then I'll go ahead and press play and then all of a sudden the setting for remote control disappears and I've been on support with them. Um, you know, in the past if I had issues they were very quick at responding and fixing things but I've removed the app from the phone, I've removed the app from the iPad and consistently I'm having problems. And this video here got delayed by 15 minutes because when I got to the behind the scenes piece it just wouldn't advance at all. I had to shut it down, shut the phone down, do this multiple times, check the settings, and I don't know what's going on, so I'm going to reach out to the company again, but um, an app that works so well for so very long is now becoming unreliable. So thankfully, I do have some other backup teleprompters, but unlike Prompt Smart Pro, they don't use voice dictation, which I find to be very, very useful. But that's it for now. Don't forget to subscribe for your chance to win two Angelbird 128GB AV Pro MK2 B90SD cards, along with a dual UHS-2 card reader. 
Or you could also win a Ulanzi LED light package with an accent light, underwater light, and various other flat panel lights to help light your subject. Or as a really good starter kit for somebody you know that's starting their own channel. I'll be awarding these two prize bundles once the channel reach. I'll be awarding these two prize bundles once the channel reaches 30,000 subscribers, and then I'll be offering up different prize bundles every so often, 10,000 or so subscribers until the channel reaches 100,000. Now, once I reach this major milestone of 100,000 subscribers, I'll be awarding a brand new Canon EOS R5 full frame mirrorless camera to one lucky viewer. Now, on that bombshell, thanks so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. We'll see you again soon.